Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. We're at VMworld 2015, and the hot topic at this VMworld, and frankly, every VMworld, is the storage I.O. blender, right? That is the mixing of data caused from multiple virtual machines hitting the same storage system at the same time. The default reaction from the industry typically is to either buy an all-flash array, a hybrid array, or use server-side flash. But that may just be masking the problem. Is there a better first step? Joining me on the whiteboard is Brian Morin. He's the Senior Vice President of Marketing at Conducive Technologies. Hey, Brian, tell us, before we jump on the whiteboard, tell us a little bit about Conducive. So Conducive is actually a 34-year-old software company. Um, 12th oldest software company in the world. Not a lot of those. Not a lot of those around this day. We were actually formerly known as Disk Keeper. That's where people know us from. Okay. Uh, knowing for years and years and years being the number one defrag utility for Windows environments. We've always, but we've had this DNA and legacy of optimizing the file systems with a software approach so that storage hardware can get better performance from it. So. Four years ago, we rebranded Conducive Technologies, as you know, because really what our bread and butter play is, is in virtualized environments where we optimize, optimize the I.O. stream from the uh, VM OS layer on down to the storage. So the net takeaway being this, our nearly 2,000 customers over the last three years that have adopted the product see 50 to 300% faster application performance without adding any additional hardware. It's a 100% software approach to solving the two big I.O. inefficiencies in virtual environments. Well, that's great, and that's kind of really what we're talking about, right? Let's talk about those two I.O. inefficiencies and how you guys fix it. So the first one, of course, is the right I.O. and the I.O. blender. So why don't you talk a little bit about sure. that? Sure, so you mentioned the I.O. blender effect, and I think that the market is starting to get aware of you know, what that really does when you have disparate VMs sending down sequential I.O. to the host hypervisor, which then randomizes a very difficult storage profile for the storage to handle. We're doing a couple things to one, really soften that noise that's okay. going down so there's a much more friendly profile. So the very first problem in, or I should say inefficiency in a Windows environment, it actually begins right here where IOs created on a Windows VM. Now okay. the play that we're talking about here specifically is related to Windows. Which is the majority of most data centers. Well, because when people do find us, our, for our, our IO reduction software solution, it's generally running on a Windows system. Their most okay. mission critical systems happen to be running on Windows, Well, whatever's running on SQL, Oracle, SAP, you okay. know the story. Cool. So, What's happening up here at the VMOS layer related to Windows, and might, people might think of, of us and our heritage of being disk keeper, mechanical disk, and physical layer. We're not talking about any of that okay. in a virtual environment. What we're talking about, what happens on day one when someone has a brand new fresh NTFS stall and everything is perfect here at what we're going to draw on the board just because I have the room, not because where it fits in the stack. Right. Let's call this the logical disk software layer. Okay. So what Windows does is Windows is abstracted from the physical layer. Right, it doesn't really even know about that, right? The SAN manages this. Of course, yeah. What the Windows is control of is the logical disk software layer. So on day one, there's going to be a really healthy relationship between I.O. and data. Okay. If there's a 32K file, it's going to make sure that there's a perfect allocation because the next available allocation fits that 32K. So the sure. net takeaway, one I.O. to process it from VM to storage. But then over time, this gets worse. Right? As over time, as you're writing files, extending files, erasing files, Windows is never looking for the best allocation here. It's looking for the next, of, uh, just the, the next available allocation. Okay. So what does that mean? That 32K file that should only need one I.O., it's going to break it up into eight 4K chunks. Essentially what that means, it means eight I.O. to process the same unit of data that only needs one I.O. if you are being a little more intelligent about using your allocation at the logical layer. So what it's trying to do is kind of squeeze it into the available space instead of finding the right segment for exactly. it. Exactly. Now okay. why does that create a problem is because you're getting not only an I.O. overhead issue over time where you're getting an IOPS inflation for your applications, you're getting even more noise and more randomization from hypervisor down. So what does that look like? Well, what it looks like is this, as you can say on day Day one on a, on a Windows system, you're going to get this nice, healthy relationship between I.O. and data where it's much bigger. However, over time, this really begins to erode. So you get an IOPS inflation. This is why administrators can't figure out how come my uh, application keeps asking for more IOPS. I haven't added more users. I'm right. not added more workload. What's happening? And it's simply this is what happened because this relationship between I.O. and data is breaking down and the noise just keeps getting bigger. So that's really interesting. Before we even start worrying about the blender, we already got a bigger problem up here. 
the big this it think about it as being the state of california and the federal government the federal government taxes you down here the state of california walks in and said we're going to tax you worse first okay <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> how do you guys address this uh, problem well it's actually very simple we install directly right into the windows os a very thin filter driver all that we're doing, at least on the right optimization end, is we're just helping Windows choose the best allocation at the logical disk layer. We're doing some things like identifying what types of files are written in a race very quickly, so that way it's, we're not creating a lot of free space fragmentation. The net takeaway is that we're increasing I.O. density. So for our customers, what they're seeing is that instead of needing 16,000 I.O. to process a gig of data, they really only need about 10,000 I.O. or cases where that's 8,000 I.O. or just 6,000 I.O. So where you may think that you need more IOPS, really, if you just solve this problem here, we're going to get pushed more throughput into your system that the noise and was beginning to erode from you at the hypervisor. So you're almost getting layer. it back to that day one experience. Though. We are getting it back to the day one. That's that's the perfect way of saying it. Okay, great. And then so that's the the right side thing. But now what about when we get into the storage I/O blender? Is helps us down there too? Sure, it's going to help down here simply because instead of having 300 Dixie cups right. moving down from the host down to the uh, storage level, you're going to get more gallon jug I/O. So what does that mean? It just simply means you're getting less noise less randomization, more contiguous writes. So for this subsystem down here, when it needs to process 32K of data, right. it's only needing one I.O. instead of being broken apart and needing eight I.O. to process okay. it. Okay, well that makes sense. So that, that handles sort of the right, we're helping the right traffic sure. there. Are you guys doing anything on the read side? We are doing one thing on the read side that's actually really unique. Now, a lot of us may not know Conducive for being a caching player. We call ourselves the world leaders in caching technology. I can't say we know for sure, but we believe we've sold more caching licenses than anyone else in the marketplace. Huh. We're OEM by nine of the top 10 PC manufacturers in the world, in the Western Digitals of the world. But what we're doing is we're simply just taking the already available DRAM okay. that's sitting server side allocated for, v for these VMs. And by taking advantage of our behavioral analytics engine, because where are we installed? We're installed at the OS layer. So what it means is we're aware of what that application is doing. And so yeah, you have a very close relationship with it, right? We, so we have very little cache churn. So what it means is we take a little bit of a very limited amount of capacity, let's say just three gig of available RAM, and we are publishing these results next month. The last 3,300 VMs from hundreds of customers or prospects that used us, they were able to service 59% of read I.O. Wow. Okay, so, so that was my going to be my big concern when you said RAM. I'm like, I'm thinking as a VMware administrator, my RAM's my precious resource. Sure and, it is. But if I'm going to get 59% gain on three gigs, that's a pretty good deal. Well, and what's even better is that we're only taking advantage of what's available. So if your application were to ask anything more of what you need from memory, we're going to serve that back to you. So there's never an issue of resource contention or memory starvation. However, what we're finding out is that customers are are figuring instead of this three gig, this three gig, instead of a great big flash pool down here, which is on our roadmap to offer for certain use cases, mm -hmm. really all that they simply need to do is just allocate more DRAM server side as tier zero for their caching strategy. Yeah, I'm thinking throw a couple more sticks of DRAM in there and I can get that number up even higher. The price right? evolution of DRAM has, has finally gotten our customers to that point. Great, so what are some of the uh, takeaways you're seeing from your customer base there as far as results? Well, from a results standpoint, what we typically see is this, is about half of all systems who evaluate our software find that they can get 50% less I.O. from VM to storage. Okay, wow. Now, when we say that we optimize systems, we don't optimize all, all systems. We optimize the most I.O. intensive systems. Okay. So the more I.O. intensive it is, the more it's demanding of your storage device, the more that we're going to perform. So not only do we have a, 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 a reduction in I.O., but what we're doing is we're delivering more throughput. 49% of all systems see 50% or more throughput. 30% of all systems actually get a 50% or greater increase in IOPS, even though we've increased IO density that should drop their IOPS, well, what's happening? We're servicing some of that I.O. so quickly out of DRAM, we actually increase their IOPS that they're able to move. And I think an important last point here is this is software. I don't need to go do a big infrastructure change. No. I can install this and be running. So our value proposition is 50 to 300% faster application performance, no hardware required. Now, if you want to get into those otherworldly performance gains, sure. Maybe look at adding some additional DRAM, but it's really about understanding and identifying the big I.O. inefficiencies in virtual environments that hardware can't solve. It can't 
change an I.O. profile that's smaller, more fractured, more random than it needs to be. Only a software layer intelligence can do that. Great. Well, Brian, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you, George. So there you have it. Before you add more flash to the environment, take a look at the rest of the environment. Make sure the I.O. pattern is optimized for flash, and that way you get the most out of that investment and any future investment that you might make. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us.